Tonight, we're following several developing stories. Extreme weather turning deadly as millions face near tropical storm strength winds. The U.S. military's life saving mission to Gaza and Americans evacuated from Haiti. First tonight, the extreme weather, a nor'easter hitting the Atlantic coast. First responders sent to rescue skiers stranded in the snow. In the south, a tornado damaging homes, cars stranded in floodwaters. More than 55 million Americans now under wind alerts in the Northeast tomorrow. Our weather team is following it all. The U.S. military sending materials to build a floating pier to Gaza to help ease a humanitarian catastrophe. The death toll rising as the Muslim holy month of Ramadan begins. President Biden saying Israel's prime minister is only making things worse. American troops evacuating embassy personnel from Haiti, non essential workers being airlifted out amid the growing violence. Armed gangs threatening civil war. President Biden and Donald Trump trading attacks on the campaign trail. Our new ABC News poll asks which candidate is more trusted to lead the country, what the numbers could mean for the election. The Justice Department reportedly launching a criminal investigation into Boeing after a panel blew out from an Alaska Airlines jet in midair. The NTSB wants to know who removed the bolts from the panel and claims Boeing has not provided maintenance documents. Kate Middleton speaking out, the Princess of Wales with a new message for those who wished her well and posting the first family picture since she underwent abdominal surgery in January. A dramatic rescue, police breaking into a burning car to rescue teenagers after a high-speed crash. And the road to the Oscars. Is it Oppenheimer's night or will there be a spoiler? Ryan Gosling getting ready for his live performance and why all eyes will be on Lily Gladstone. Will she make history? With Johnson and Lindsay Davis report from the red carpet. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us on this Oscar Sunday. I'm Rachel Scott in tonight for Lindsay Davis. As we come on the air, more than 55 million people in the Northeast are bracing for powerful winds. They could reach up to 60 miles per hour by tomorrow. That's nearly the strength of a tropical storm. It all comes on the heels of that drenching nor'easter. In coastal areas, unusually warm temperatures, melting ice in northern Maine, increasing the risk of flooding and a possible tornado tearing down trees and destroying homes across Georgia and the Carolinas. ABC's meteorologist Samara Theodore leads us off. Tonight, a major storm bringing torrential rains and severe weather across the East Coast. In Mount Washington, New Hampshire, over a foot of snow and wind speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. Icy snow surfaces stemming from the state's warmest winter on record causing dangerous mountain conditions. First responders rescuing two injured skiers Saturday at the Tuckerman Ravine Ski Area. A third skier, 20-year-old Madison Salzburg, suffered fatal injuries after falling 600 feet. In the south, a tornado tearing through Brantley County, Georgia, damaging homes, ripping off roofs and bringing down trees. You hear stuff flying and hitting the house. I and it's just one of those things that you just don't stuff. expect to happen. <laughs> High winds and heavy rain combined with high tide causing severe flooding in parts of South Carolina. Cars stranded in flooded out streets. Drivers forced to push their vehicles through knee deep waters. In Tampa, more than 300 flights delayed and 90 canceled due to the nasty weather. Freezing temperatures in northern Maine. This drone video showing chunks of ice floating down the Aroostook River near Washburn. Samara Theater joins us now with the forecast. Samara, the rain is over in the Northeast, but millions on alert for those powerful winds. That's right, Rachel. So the rain has moved out. Now we're gearing up for strong winds just in time for the start of the work week. Take a look at where the wind advisories are situated from Washington, D.C. and Baltimore all the way up to Boston and Portland, Maine. We even have some winter storm warnings remaining further inland. Now, tomorrow morning, we could see wind gusts as high as 40 miles per hour. By the afternoon, 60 miles per hour. That could lead to power outages and downed trees. Meanwhile, out west, a series of storms battering the west coast. Storm 2 arriving tomorrow night into Tuesday morning. We could see under a foot of snow throughout the California Sierra and maybe even 30 inches of snow throughout the Cascades. Rachel? Samara tracking those back-to-back -back storms in the Northwest. Samara, thank you. Overseas now, the U.S. is ramping up efforts to get aid to the starving people of Gaza. A logistics vessel now heading to the eastern Mediterranean. President Biden has ordered the U.S. military to build a floating pier off the Gaza Strip. It will allow relief and supplies to be delivered by sea. Here's ABC's Tom Sufi Burge. Tonight, no ceasefire on the eve of Ramadan. Israeli forces pressing on. 
with the death toll in Gaza now passing 31,000 and more than 70,000 injured, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. President Biden defending Israel's right to pursue Hamas, but warning Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu the scale of civilian suffering in Gaza is damaging Israel's international reputation. He must, he must, he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken. He's hurting, in my view, He's hurting Israel more than helping Israel. The president's plan to build a temporary pier off Gaza for aid shipments now in motion. The U.S. military saying this logistics vessel left Virginia this weekend, carrying construction equipment to the eastern Mediterranean off Gaza's coast. Meanwhile, in nearby Cyprus, this Spanish boat packed with 200 tonnes of food from US-based World Central Kitchen, set to depart as soon as possible, as the UN warns of a potential famine. <laughs> this Gaza hospital, little Mahmoud's mother, Intisar, telling ABC News her son is sick and dehydrated because of a lack of food. With Ramadan set to begin, heightened Israeli security around Jerusalem, including the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is the third holiest site for Muslims anywhere in the world. And keeping the peace here at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem during Ramadan without a ceasefire in place in Gaza will be critical for dialing down tensions in this entire region. Tonight, we saw Israeli police stopping some young men from entering the mosque. The sheikh directing part of that holy site telling me, hey, Muslim. all Muslims should be allowed inside the mosque to pray. And Tom Sophie Bird joins us now, right? Tom, you mentioned that aid getting into Gaza. When will it arrive? Well, Rachel, officials say that World Central KitchenAid in Cyprus will take two to three days to arrive at an undisclosed location in Gaza after it departs. In terms of that U.S.-made pier off the coast, well, Pentagon officials estimate that could be completed in about two months. Rachel. Tom, thank you. Staying overseas and to Haiti, today U.S. Marines flying in forces to beef up security around the embassy and to help evacuate non-essential staff. The situation on the ground is becoming increasingly violent as armed gangs attempt to topple the government, leaving innocent people, including some Americans, in the crossfire. Here's ABC's Matt Rivers. Tonight, with Haiti on the verge of collapse, the U.S. military evacuating non-essential embassy personnel overnight, choppering in Marines to reinforce the embassy. The State Department urging Americans to leave as gangs launched coordinated attacks across the country against the presidential palace and the interior ministry, multiple police stations set on fire, gang soldiers showing off stolen flak jackets. The government now extending a state of emergency and Caribbean leaders calling an emergency meeting Monday for what they call a, quote, dire situation. And tonight, ABC News speaking to the man behind it all, gang leader Jimmy Cherissier, known as Barbecue. He says the first step in the fight is to overthrow Ariel Henry, and then we start the real fight against the corrupt oligarchs and politicians. The unelected U.S.-backed Henri took charge when President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated two and a half years ago. Poverty, violence and hunger soaring on his watch, now even the U.S. pressuring him to step aside. Barbecue is Haiti's most notorious gang leader, a former police officer responsible for an explosion of violence. Even if Henri steps down, it's not clear who takes over or when new elections would take place. In the meantime, hospitals closed. Thousands of criminals have been freed, access to food or clean water increasingly scarce. Ordinary Haitians, innocent people, suffering. And Rachel, Barbecue explicitly told me that if Ariel Henry resigns, he will call for an immediate ceasefire and halt his attacks on police. Though given the destruction that Barbecue and his gangs have caused over the last several years, many will be skeptical of that statement. Rachel. Matt Rivers on this developing story. Matt, thank you. Back here at home and the race for the White House, it is heating up. Former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden trading attacks, both campaigning this weekend in the all-important state of Georgia, with President Biden won in 2020 by just over 11,000 votes. And tonight, our new ABC News Ipsos poll has new revelations on how much Americans trust these candidates. So let's get right to ABC's Mary Alice Parks at the White House. All right, Mary Alice, this is not looking good for either campaign. 
Yeah, Rachel, a possible sign that this could be such a tight election. Americans split on who they trust more to lead the election, to lead the country, I should say. Uh, Trump ahead of Biden by three percentage points, but that's within the margin of error. And 30 percent of respondents in our ABC News Ipsos poll say they trust neither candidate. So perhaps some voters still up for grabs. Now, both candidates favor ability rating so low. 33 percent for Biden, 29 percent for Trump. And just more than one in five Americans have an unfavorable view of both Biden and Trump. Americans overall still saying that they trust Trump better than Biden on the economy and the border, obviously two top issues. Now, as far as the State of the Union, of those who watched or read about the State of the Union, 44% said that they did think Biden did better than expected. And I can tell you the president's campaign, they feel good about things. They say that he raised $10 million in the 24 hours right after the president's speech. Rachel, that was his biggest fundraising single day of fundraising so far his message settling with some of his supporters mary alice thank you tonight the justice department has reportedly opened a criminal investigation into boeing it comes after those terrifying moments in january a door plug ripping off an alaska airlines plane in the middle of the flight tonight what the ntsb is demanding from boeing here's abc's morgan norwood Tonight, Boeing now the target of a Department of Justice criminal investigation into that terrifying midair blowout. According to the Wall Street Journal, a door plug on Boeing 737 MAX 9 ripping off during an Alaska Airlines flight in January, forcing an emergency landing, just narrowly avoiding a potential catastrophe. And tonight, the NTSB wants to know who removed four bolts its investigation found were missing from that door plug. Three shown here in this photo, texted among Boeing employees. The agency demanding Boeing provide any production documents and information on the specific production shifts and the names of the 25 employees at their Washington plant who worked on those bolts, telling a Senate Commerce Committee last week, Boeing has yet to comply. It's absurd that two months later, we don't have that. In this letter to committee chair Senator Maria Cantwell, Boeing says they sent the employee names, but admitting when it comes to the production records, we have looked extensively and have not found any such documentation, adding the documents required by our processes were not created when the door plug was opened. The DOJ was already looking into Boeing, and more specifically, whether the company violated its 2021 deferred prosecution agreement after two deadly 737 MAX crashes, requiring the company to cooperate with federal probes. And Rachel Boeing and the DOJ declined to comment. Rachel. Thanks, Morgan. Also tonight, we are getting a glimpse of Britain's Princess Kate, the Princess of Wales, tweeting out a photo with her three children. It's the first official photo since she left the hospital in January. ABC's Inez de la Catera has more from outside Buckingham Palace. Tonight, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, appearing in an official photograph for the first time since the palace announced she had undergone abdominal surgery nearly two months ago, posting this image with her children George, Charlotte, and Louis to mark Mother's Day in Britain, writing, thank you for your kind wishes and continued support over the last two months, signing off C for Catherine, but providing no update on her health. Kensington Palace saying her husband, Prince William, took the photograph earlier this week. It comes amid weeks of of questions about the princess's condition. The palace saying they would only provide updates when there was significant information. Just days ago, paparazzi snapped this image of her driving with her mother in Windsor. Prior to that, she hadn't been seen since Christmas. I think certainly the image absolutely has the effect of silencing some of that speculation, particularly some of the more wild kind of speculation that we're seeing online around her recovery. And we are expecting to see Queen Camilla and Prince William tomorrow as they mark Commonwealth Day with a service at Westminster Abbey. Kate will not be there and neither will King Charles, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Rachel. Inez, thank you. Now to the Oscars red carpet. The 96th annual Academy Awards is just about to get underway. Jimmy Kimmel is back once again, joining the ranks of longtime Oscar hosts. But the big question tonight, will Oppenheimer sweep its way into Oscar history? It's already cleaned up at the pre-Oscar awards. And will history be made by Lily Gladstone? She could become the first Native American person to take home an Oscar for her lead in the film Killers of the Flower Moon. So let's get right to the red carpet, which is back to red after last year's champagne carpet. And that that's where we find our Whit Johnson and Lindsay Davis who are watching it all. Whit, Lindsay, is there a sense that Oppenheimer is going to sweep tonight? 
Hey, Rachel, happy Oscar Sunday. Oppenheimer has a huge chance at taking home the gold tonight, and not just for Best Picture. The film is actually nominated for a whopping 13 awards, which positions the film to potentially make history for the most awards ever won by a single film. The number to beat is 11. Currently, three films are tied with 11 total wins. Those movies, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, Titanic, and Ben-Hur. Another closely watched race for Oppenheimer fans will be Best Actor, Killian Murphy, the favorite, but a late surge of support for the holdovers Paul Giamatti could lead to an upset. And other potential history-making moments to look for tonight. Robert De Niro up for Best Supporting Actor. He's clinched his ninth total nomination, which ties him with only seven other actors in history. And everyone's talking about Lily Gladstone. Her performance in Killers of the Flower Moon got her the nomination for Best Actress. If she takes home the gold, she would become the first Native American to ever win in an acting category. In Poor Things, Emma Stone, also a strong contender for Best Actress. So some wondering, could this mean a tie? The last time a Best Actress ended in a tie was in 1969 with Barbara Streisand for Funny Girl and Katherine Hepburn for The Lion in Winter. So a lot to watch for tonight. Rachel, back to you. A big night. All right, Lindsay Witt, thank you. And stay with ABC. Lindsay and Witt are live on the red carpet following the news. And the 96th Academy Awards ceremony starts one hour earlier earlier than usual at 7 p.m. Eastern. There's still much more ahead on World News Tonight this Sunday, a daring rescue effort police pulling teenagers from a burning car. And there's nothing like a buzzer beater, but what made this one extra special? Next tonight, an arrest and a horrific attack in the New York subway. The suspect now identified as Christian Valdez. Police say he pushed his girlfriend in front of a train in lower Manhattan on Saturday. The woman lost both of her feet. Valdez now charged with attempted murder. Police say he was on parole after serving time for an attack on another woman and her three-year-old daughter. Moving on to this new video just released showing a frantic rescue effort in Southern California. A car carrying teenagers crashed into a light pole in Encino last month. Officers can be seen breaking the windows as smoke begins to billow from the car. Two of the teenagers were pulled to safety just as the flames erupted. A third passenger, a 16-year-old girl, could not be rescued and died at the scene. When we come back, what could be better than hitting a game-winning shot? Wait till you hear the backstory. To the index now and a buzzer beater that no one saw coming. With one second left on Saturday, Camila Cardoso banked a three-pointer for the win over Tennessee. That shot saved South Carolina's undefeated season. The college senior had never even taken a three-point shot before. And making it even sweeter, the team's head coach had Cardoso's mom and sister flown in from Brazil. It was the first time they had ever seen her play in college. When we come back, what it's like to be on the cusp of Oscar history, what Lily Gladstone told Art Lindsay Davis. Tonight, everyone will be watching to see if Lily Gladstone makes history as the first Native American to win an Oscar for lead actress. Art Lindsay Davis spent some time with her on the road to the Oscars. How have the Osage responded to all of this attention? It's, um, since it, the story ultimately belongs to them, it was made by Martin Scorsese, but made with Osage people. So it was, um, it's really remarkable to see the kind of discourse that it's raised. You know, the level of ownership and pride, it was made with um, great care. I kind of felt a sense of shame that I had no idea about these murders that had taken place in Oklahoma for this oil inheritance. When did you first learn about this time? You know, honestly, a lot of people, I think, express that level of shame, but there were a lot of Osage people that grew up not knowing about this because it was such a traumatic chapter. It's a tenet of the culture and survival to keep moving forward. You never stand in the same river twice. The water is always changing because it keeps moving forward. And I think when the reign of terror was over, a lot of people just wanted to keep moving. Being the first Native American nominee for this kind of blows my mind because the origin of film, some of the earliest film reels that people were watching pouring out to go see were made by Native people documenting and showing and capturing some of our dances, some of our own stories. American Indians were at the heart of Hollywood in the 1920s. You know, those artists back then really influenced the culture of film. So having this moment, you know, this year, it's long overdue, but it's very welcome. <laughs> Our thanks to Lindsay. Thanks for watching. I'm Rachel Scott. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.